finally conceded that she can no longer remain in Downing Street, announcing she will resign as Prime Minister on June 7, and reactions are rolling in. Theresa May had clung on after surviving the loss of her parliamentary majority in the 2017 snap election, three historic parliamentary defeats for her proposed withdrawal treaty with the EU, a no-confidence vote in which over half of her backbenchers called on her to go, calls to step down by the leadership of the party's grassroots activists, devastating losses in English local elections, and dire polling for the European Parliament elections. But, with an attempt to put her withdrawal treaty to the House of Commons for a fourth time, sweetened with an offer to let MPs vote on holding a second referendum, hold below the waterline before it could even be table, she has at last accepted the inevitable in an emotional speech, highlighting such achievements as her race disparity audit and gender pay reporting. Reactions are mixed, with right-leaning Sun newspaper offered a pitying yet damning verdict in its leader article on her premiership, with digital political editor Hugo Jai observing that she suffered the worst election campaign and the worst commons revolt in history. She's likely to be remembered as possibly the worst prime minister in decades or even of all time. Jai's colleague Tom Newton Dunn struck a similar tone, describing her speech as a highly dignified defense of her record, but also a clear admission of serious failure. But the emotional collapse at the end revealed she is also, a, shattered human being, broken by the Brexit wheel, he at Prime Minister Theresa May announced her resignation from outside 10 Downing Street Friday morning, stating she would be officially stepping down in two weeks' time. Prime Minister Theresa May announces resignation. Will officially relinquish leadership of the Conservative Party in two weeks on June 7. May will remain as Prime Minister until a new party leader is selected, possibly weeks or months in the future. In her remarks outside the Prime Minister's official residence, Theresa May said she had done her best, and everything I can to deliver Brexit by negotiating a deal with the European Union but conceded sadly I was not able to do so. Saying it was time for a new Prime Minister to lead Brexit, Mrs May said she would be resigning as leader of the Conservative Party on Friday 7th of June, so that a successor could be chosen. In doing so, the Prime Minister fires the starting gun on a leadership race that has already been run behind closed doors for weeks. The details of her departure mean Mrs May could remain party leader, and hence Prime Minister, for weeks if not months more. While she will officially relinquish the title of Conservative Party leader in 14 days, May revealed she would also be staying on Prime Minister until her replacement is selected, which depending on how the election runs. When Mrs May became leader following the resignation of David Cameron and in the wake of the 2016 EU referendum, she was selected within days as other candidates dropped out to give her a clear run. In the case of David Cameron's own ascension to the leadership, it took five and a half months between it being announced and the final selection. Update 1515, could a no-deal Brexit now be inevitable? Well, that depends on who the next Prime Minister is, but people haven't been slow in noticing that if whoever replaces Theresa May is an actual Brexiteer, there's nothing the European Union or Parliament can do to stop them from executing the will of the British people by taking the United Kingdom out of the European Union. As Breitbart London reports this afternoon, among those reaching that conclusion is the Spanish government, whose spokesman said after Theresa May's announcement that, the hard Brexit seems an almost impossible reality to stop. The Spanish government has contingency plans for all possible outcomes of the UK's exit from Europe. The European Union welcomed the news by making clear they wouldn't reopen Theresa May's withdrawal agreement for a new leader, meaning whoever takes over is left either trying to sell a deeply unpopular deal they had no part in creating or taking Britain out of the European Union in full. Former Vice President Joe Biden was reportedly one of the few Obama administration officials who participated in secretive meetings during the early stages of the Obama-era intelligence community's initial operations regarding suspected Russian interference in the 2016 presidential campaign. That tidbit was contained deep inside a 7,700-plus word Washington Post article published June 23, 2017 in which the newspaper also detailed the highly compartmentalized nature of the original Russia interference investigation and the manner in which other U.S. intelligence agencies were deliberately kept in the dark. Part of the efforts eventually involved unsubstantiated and ultimately discredited charges made by the Christopher Steele dossier that Trump campaign officials were colluding with Russia. Biden's largely unreported role in the initial Obama administration meetings on the matter of Russian interference could spark further questions now that Attorney General William Barr has appointed a U.S. attorney to investigate the origins of the Russia collusion claims. Only last week, 
Barr commented that the intelligence community's early handling of the Russia investigation may itself raise questions. He noted that it was first handled at a very senior level and then by a small group. In an interview on Fox News, Barr stated, the thing that's interesting about this is that this was handled at a very senior level of these departments. It wasn't handled in the ordinary way that investigations or counterintelligence activities are conducted. It was sort of an ad hoc, small group, and most of these people are no longer with the FBI or the CIA or the other agencies involved. I think there's a misconception out there that we know a lot about what happened. The fact of the matter is, Bob Mueller did not look at the government's activities. The lengthy Washington Post article from 2017 detailed the closed circle of Obama administration officials who were involved in overseeing the initial efforts related to the Russia investigation, a circle then was narrowly widened to include Biden, according to the newspaper report. According to the newspaper, in the summer of 2016, CIA Director John Brennan convened a secret task force at CIA headquarters composed of several dozen analysts and officers from the CIA, the NSA and the FBI. The Post described the unit as so secretive it functioned as a sealed compartment hidden even from the rest of the U.S. intelligence community, a unit whose workers were all made to sign additional non-disclosure forms. The unit reported to top officials, the newspaper documented. They worked exclusively for two groups of customers, officials said. The first was Obama and fewer than 14 senior officials in government. The second was a team of operations specialists at the CIA, NSA and FBI who took direction from the task force on where to aim their subsequent efforts to collect more intelligence on Russia. The number of Obama administration officials who were allowed access to the Russia intelligence was also highly limited, the Post reported. At first only four senior officials were involved, and not Biden. Those officials were CIA Director John Brennan, Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, Attorney General Loretta Lynch and then FBI Director James Comey. Their aides were all barred from attending the initial meetings, the Post stated. The circle of those who attended the secretive meetings on the matter soon widened to include Biden, the Post reported, emphasis added. The secrecy extended into the White House. Rice and White House Homeland Security Advisor Lisa Monaco convened meetings in the Situation Room to weigh the mounting evidence of Russian interference and generate options for how to respond. At first, only four senior security officials were allowed to attend, Brennan, Clapper, Attorney General Loretta E. Lynch and FBI Director James B. Comey. Aides ordinarily allowed entry as plus ones were barred. Gradually, the circle widened to include Vice President Biden and others. Agendas sent to Cabinet Secretaries including John F. Kerry at the State Department and Ashton B. Carter at the Pentagon, arrived in envelopes that subordinates were not supposed to open. Sometimes the agendas were withheld until participants had taken their seats in the Situation Room. Adding another layer of secrecy, the newspaper reported that when the closed cabinet sessions on Russia began in the White House Situation Room in August, the video feed from the main room was cut off during the meetings. The feed, which allows only for video and not audio, is usually kept on so that senior aides can see when a meeting takes place. The paper reported. The blacked out screens were seen as an ominous sign among lower level White House officials who were largely kept in the dark about the Russia deliberations even as they were tasked with generating options for retaliation against Moscow. It was not clear what went on inside those meetings and how many included Biden's participation. The meetings progressed during the period that the Steele dossier was reported to the FBI. The dossier was cited as evidence in three successful FISA applications signed by Comey to obtain warrants to spy on Trump campaign adviser Carter Page. The second and third were renewal applications since a FISA warrant must be renewed every 90 days. Comey, Brennan and Clapper have been the subjects of a dispute in recent weeks over which top Obama administration officials advocated for the infamous dossier to be utilized as evidence in the Russia collusion investigation, as Breitbart News reported. The dossier was produced by the controversial Fusion GPS firm which was paid for its anti-Trump work by Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign and the Democratic National Committee via the Perkins Coie law firm. Last year, meanwhile, Biden publicly defended the Obama administration's handling of the Russia probe amid accusations that the Obama White House didn't do enough and waited until after the election to make the Russia interference charges public. I'm sure I'm leaving stuff out. Biden said last January at a speech to the Council on Foreign Relations. The bottom line was it was tricky as hell. It's easy to say now, well maybe we should have said more.
but I'll ask you a rhetorical question, can you imagine if the President of the United States called a press conference in October, and said, tell you what, the Russians are trying to interfere with our elections and we have to do something about it. What do you think would have happened? Trump, however, previously suggested Obama's not being forceful enough on the matter was politically motivated. Taking to Twitter, Trump wrote. The reason that President Obama did nothing about Russia after being notified by the CIA of meddling is that he expected Clinton would win, and did not want to rock the boat. He didn't choke, he colluded or obstructed, and it did the Dems and crooked Hillary no good. President Donald Trump directed the intelligence community to cooperate with Attorney General Bill Barr's investigation into surveillance activities during the 2016 presidential election. In a memorandum to his seven cabinet directors and the Attorney General, Trump asked that officials cooperate with Barr's investigation and authorized Barr to declassify any information about the investigation into his campaign that he deemed necessary, provided that he consulted with the agency responsible. Today's action will help ensure that all Americans learn the truth about the events that occurred, and the actions that were taken, during the last presidential election and will restore confidence in our public institutions, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders wrote in a statement sent to reporters. The president has repeatedly sought an investigation into the efforts of the FBI to spy on his campaign during the 2016 presidential race, using a phony dossier produced for Hillary Clinton's campaign as part of the justifying documents. On Thursday's broadcast of CNN's AC360, Senator Richard Blumenthal, DCT, reacted to President Trump's order that the intelligence community cooperate with Attorney General William Barr's investigation into surveillance during the 2016 election by stating that it seems much more like an effort to distract with, frankly, a dull, rusty object, not a bright, shiny one. Blumenthal said, as a former United States attorney and a state attorney general for some 20 years, I am baffled by this memorandum. There seems absolutely no reason for it. Agencies have a legal obligation to cooperate with the Attorney General of the United States, and it seems much more like an effort to distract with, frankly, a dull, rusty object, not a bright, shiny one. And I think that we already have two investigations ongoing into this area. The Mueller report contains graphic detail about how the investigation got started with credible information about Russian spying, that the FBI began addressing through a counterintelligence investigation. So, the need for this memorandum or whatever it is, in fact, seems far from apparent.